From the Big House, Michigan Stadium in Ann Arbor, the largest college football stadium in America will be filled well beyond capacity today as the 12th ranked Michigan Wolverines play host to number seven, Michigan State. Here come the Wolverines. Ready for one of the most anticipated games in the 89 year history of this stadium. Michigan, one of the pleasant surprises, one of the great stories of this college football season. They're five and one on the heels of a five and seven season a year ago. Lost their opener at Utah, a team that's now ranked number four in America. They've won five in a row since. Three of them, the last three, by shutout. And one of the features of this great venue, both teams enter through the same tunnel, making their way onto the field. The Michigan State Spartans were ranked as high as number two earlier this season, but some narrow wins in the last couple of weeks against Purdue and last week at Rutgers, and they're now ranked number seven. And the Spartans take the field. Temperature near 50 degrees under mostly cloudy skies. Very little breeze in the stadium at the moment. And Kenny Allen, a good kickoff. It's a touchback. They've had trouble handling any type of blitz movement up front. Michigan, the best third down defense in the country. Cook going deep and has a man. Aaron Burbridge for a first down. Rudolph coming off his best game last week against Northwestern. Pitches it to Davion Smith. And he gets stacked up in the line of scrimmage. Pistol formation now with Davion Smith lined up behind Rudock. And nothing doing. Co-coordinator with Mike Tressel, who's on the field. Barnett calls the defense. Is Rudock in trouble? And he'll be taken down back at the 18-yard line. Riley Buller, the middle linebacker. Had a little snow flurry activity early this morning. Connor Cook from his own two fires and gets them out of the hole immediately with the catch by Aaron Burbridge. Just a four-man rush and Cook with plenty of time and another good catch for a first down. They spread the field on second and ten. Cook throws open receiver R.J. Shelton. Down to the Michigan 42-yard line. It was the second time in this drive. A penalty against the Michigan defense is given Michigan State a first down. And a reverse. Aaron Burbridge with running room. And he's run down by Chris Wormley, a defensive end. They scored in each phase of the game last week against Northwestern. Look out. Amara Darbo dropped for a big loss. Back inside the 20. They started today 56th in the country in total defense. 57th now. And Rudock is sacked by Shalik Calhoun. Wants to be a high school principal like his dad and grandfather. Connor Cook slides down under a hit. And now there's a flag perhaps for that second hit. Looked like he ducked under the first one, but then got hit late after he slid to the ground. It's a good concept and a good call by Dave Warner, the offensive coordinator. The running game's being stifled. Spread him out and run the Q run, which was a nice little counter trap set up for Connor Cook. Personal foul, plus targeting, defense. Ooh. 15 yards from the end of the run. Automatic first down. The ruling is under further review. After further review, the ruling of the field on targeting stands. The 35 is disqualified. Wow. The Bolden irate. Trying to fire up the fans as he heads off. And of course, there's just that one tunnel, as we noted at the top of the telecast, so he's going to have to go all the way around to the other side of the field at the 50 behind the Michigan State sideline. Take him a long way, too. <laughs> Golden still with about 30 yards to go to get to the tunnel. Michigan State first and 10 of the 24. The slant. Good for another first down to Aaron Burbridge. 
And for the first time in four games, the opponent is in the red zone against Michigan. Cut off that inside. 13-yard gain, already six receptions for Burbridge, senior from Farmington Hills, Michigan. L.J. Scott finds a hole, finds the end zone. Touchdown, Spartans. Third down and five. Jim Harbaugh involved in the play calling with the offensive coordinator Tim Drebno. Rudock steps into the throw and it's incomplete. John Reschke had the coverage. Intended for Jake Butt. That's why when you're in a crucial situation, you take a timeout to make sure everybody understands what you're doing. So finally they snap it, the play fake one way, and they try to set up a screen to the other, and pressure from Michigan State blew that play up. Third down, less than a yard. They hand it off to the fullback carriage, and Michigan State was ready for that. I don't think he got to the first down marker. These receivers have to get open. Cook the inside fake and throws complete to Burbridge. Connor Cook, design roll, has some running room, instead throws. Is that a catch at the 32-yard line? No, out of bounds. R.J. Shelton working back to the football. Mm. That left foot is in bounds in tow, and it should be a catch. You know, Connor Cook tends to thrive in these type of situations, and they certainly have to answer the last punch that Michigan threw with Homa's touchdown. Well, it hasn't been easy or pretty on the way to 6-0, but as Mark D'Antonio says, every week we found a way to win, and that's the bottom line. Find a way to win. Cook the pump fake. Has the man open! Touchdown, Michigan State! McGarrett Kings! Talked about spreading the ball around. McGarrett Kings beats number 34 Clark on a little double move. An outstanding patience. Here's the double move. Just a little post corner route. Clark jumps it. Connor Cook delivers a strike, Todd. Yeah, he dropped it right in there. Perfect spot in the ball. Perfect timing. The second he saw that cornerback take just a tiny bit of a false step, that ball was out. Strike for Michigan State. 75 yards in five plays, and the extra point good from Michael Geiger. Yeah, and they got tired. They have a lot of pride, and they're playing tougher. Dumped off and batted down. Michigan State brings pressure, and a wide open receiver, J.U. Chesson, wrestled across the boundary by Demetrius Cox at the three yard line. It'll be fourth down and goal from the three. His return to action, he felt helped elevate his team. Good catch. We talked about how last week those wide receivers made one big catch after another. It's McGarrett Kings again. Play action pass for Jake Rudock on first down and Shalik Calhoun there again. Moved up to fifth all time of Michigan State in sacks. Just a three man rush. Rudock zips one low. It's going to be ruled a catch by the official on the ball, but no catch from the official along the far sideline. Started the year with 23 seniors, and 20 of them were 50-year seniors. Rudock, his pass batted down to the line of scrimmage by Lawrence Thomas. Jabril Peppers in the slot down here to your screen. And they throw it to Peppers in space. And he's going to be stopped about two yards short of the first down. Kari Willis. Chris Fry. I think Mark uses that as the building that chip on the shoulder. Couple of fakes in the run game, and Cook has a wide open receiver. Trevin Pendleton, the fullback, off to the races inside the 20. Batted down from behind, but he's in for a touchdown. 75 yards for the fullback, Trevin Pendleton. That angle, you can't tell if he's over the goal line or not. They take the touchdown away, and it doesn't matter. Except it cost a couple of seconds. L.J. Scott the touchdown. The 
of course, it's pending the review. Pretty sure this one will stand. That's a champion's answer right there. Going down two possessions in the fourth quarter. You call a, a play that nobody expects, and you execute it perfectly. It was a 74-yard gain for Pendleton, and it's the longest offensive play of the year for the Spartans. Jermaine Edmondson closest for Michigan State. There hasn't been a turnover in the game. That was awfully close. Davion Smith can knock it outside. Gang tackled by the Spartans back at the 21. 60th ranked player in the country at any position coming out of high school. Florida State among those who really wanted him. Rudock short and a short gain to Jake Butt. They'll give him forward progress to the 28. Midway through the fourth quarter. Michigan by two. Third down and nine. Four-man rush. Rudock throws off the hands of his receiver and incomplete. They've trailed by 10 and by nine. Now they're within two. They have not led today. Connor Cook deep and caught. Aaron Burbridge won the ongoing battle with Jordan Lewis. Michigan State's forced to play man in this short yardage. Michigan four out of 13 on third down. That pass is batted away up in the air. It comes back to Rudock, who gets wrestled to the ground well short of the first down. Loss of 10 on the play. Second and 15. Spartans from their own 23. 4 10 to go. Here comes the rush again. Cook floats one. Caught! Burbridge again. Lewis on him again. First down, Michigan State. Michigan State 50% for the year on third down, just two out of 10 today against the best third down defense in the country. Michigan blitzes. And it's a first down. Gerald Holmes struggles to the 36. Could be the biggest play of the season for these two teams. Three-man rush, and Henry gets pressure again. Cook had to scramble, just lofts it up, and it is batted down. Channing Stribling and DeMonte Thomas. You know what he, uh, and that's what's happening. The situations yeah. like this. This is why you do that. And here's the thing, is Desmond's happy? Is the one thing this team has that's different? The biggest difference in this team from last year to this year is a genuine confidence, not a false bravado. A genuine confidence. And it comes from having success. You know, last year they were waiting for the inevitable bad thing to happen, usually a turnover. It is the belief among many recruits that Michigan State Michigan rather was down and not showing signs of getting back up and today was don't you think for a lot of people around the country the, the test O'Neill's been terrific with the rugby style punts but you have to be careful here make sure the snaps on target which you can't allow a block and I there's nobody back deep for Michigan yep. State. I was going to say, you might want to kick it out of bounds to prevent a return, but with nobody back there, just kick it down the field. Tell your punter to one-step it. Don't take your normal steps. One-step it. Get it out. Whoa, he has trouble with the snap, and the ball is free. It's picked up by Michigan State's Jalen Watts Jackson, and he scores on the last play of the game. Unbelievable.
Kings who had a couple of drops overcome with the emotion. And they found the most improbable way to win today. There's a couple of questions now on this play. Most notably, did he stay in bounds? Bounds right there. Good blocking downfield. No question about that. He's way in bounds. And did he score? Yes, he did. And the clock did expire. 38 yards. O'Neal, who's been terrific all season long in his first year at Michigan. All he had to do was handle the snap and get it off. And he could not. Well, it almost looked like Shawnee started his rugby style punt before he caught the football to secure it. Definitely a touchdown. And thank goodness, clearly, he crossed the goal line before his knee went down. Because I don't think anybody on either side would want to have to suffer through another replay review at the goal line. And, and I think another, you know, learning tool, another mistake that he made was trying to kick the ball as opposed to once he secured that football, just cut your losses right there because the only thing that Michigan State could have countered with would be the Hail Mary. Jalen Watts Jackson. Backup defensive back, predominantly a special teams player, sophomore from Dearborn, Michigan. I'm sure there are a number of Spartan fans who had never heard of him. He is now a Michigan State legend and in the history books of this rivalry forever. Champions die hard. Michigan State champions, tough, aggressive, great football game. Game's first turnover comes in the final 10 seconds. Michigan State retains the Paul Bunyan Trophy. An absolutely shocking result and ending here in Ann Arbor. Now let's send you to Baton Rouge for Florida and LSU. So long, everyone.